This is Navisworks Jetstream Beginner Presenter Training Module Creating Output. So far in these beginner modules, you've gained all the skills you need to text your model and light them to produce great photorealistic renders. In our third and final beginner module, you're going to learn how to get your creation out of Jetstream as images and videos. Once you've done this, you can use this output in presentations, on websites, in print, or however you like. So let's first look at images. Exporting your render and image is a very simple process. Let's just go through it with one of the example models. Select File, Open from the menu bar, and select the Brewery Textured NWD. So far we've been using the Render button to preview the results within Jetstream. Now let's export to an image file. So select File, Export, and Rendered Image. This will bring up the setup dialog. Set the type to JPEG. Choose where you want the file to go using Browse. This is really up to you where you want the image. And under Size, for example, set the type to Explicit and Width to 1024 and Height 768. You can obviously set these values to whatever you wish. And click OK to do the render. Once the render is complete, you should now have an image file that you can look at in your own choice of photo software. In Windows XP, you can also preview the image just by right-clicking on the image file and selecting Preview. We've created a JPEG image for this example, but you can choose from a wide range of image formats just by changing the type option. Now, let's look at exporting videos. One of Jetstream's most powerful features is that it can be used for real-time walkthroughs of even the largest and most complex models. However, if you want the very best in image quality for your walkthrough, you can export a pre-rendered animation. Select the Flyby animation from the Viewpoints window on the right. This is a predefined animation we set up earlier. Now, select File, Export, Animation. All of the options on this dialog are going to be fairly important to you, so as we set them up, we'll look at what each of them means. Source allows you to choose whether you want to export the current selected animation, as we do in this case, or if you want to export a timeline or sequence. So set the source to current animation. Renderer allows you to choose between Presenter or OpenGL. If you choose OpenGL, the results will look like Jetstream's real-time output. So OpenGL looks a lot worse than using Presenter, but it is a lot quicker, so it's useful for previewing animations before committing to the final render. So in this case, let's set the renderer to Presenter. The Format option lets you decide what type of file you want your animation to come out as. Mostly you'll be using Windows AVIs. And the Options buttons allow you to set up your compression options. However, you can also choose to export your animation as a series of images. Set the format to Windows AVI. Click on the Options button and set the compressor to Indio Video and click OK. Size is self-explanatory. It's worth noting that for animations you should generally use much lower resolutions than you use for still images. Under size, we're going to use the following values. Set the type to explicit, width to 640, and height to 480. Finally, select the number of frames per second. The higher this is, the smoother your animation will be. Films run at about 24 frames per second, but as it adds a lot to your rendering time, you can generally get away with anything from 10 to 15 frames per second. So in this case, set FPS to 10. All of the options are set up now, and if you want, you can now click OK to set it going. However, be warned that rendering animations by its nature is very time consuming. A 20 second animation at 10 FPS has to produce 200 full rendered images. So this animation took us around 2 hours to render. If you want to save yourself the rendering time, you can just look at the supplied example brewery textured flyby.mpeg in the examples folder to see the finished animation. So that's it for creating output. There was a lot more to remember there than in the previous modules, but obviously you can view this recording again or view the PDF version of these tutorials from our website. One tip worth knowing when rendering animations. If you compare the rendered image to how it looks in the navigation window, you may notice that the edges of what you can see in Jetstream have been cut off. This is because the output was at a different aspect ratio to our navigation window. You can lock the navigation window to a specific size or more crucially, a specific aspect ratio. To do this, select View, Window Size and change the type to Use Aspect Ratio. Set the width to 4 and the height to 3. 
This will give you a standard 4 by 3 aspect ratio, which is the same as most displays. That's it for the beginner section of this course. These first three modules should have taken you through all the basic skills you need when working with your own models in Presenter.